there you are. Thank you. I remember last year sitting right where you were. I just got involved in the Georgia Hospital Net. Oh, I get two of them. Right. And I learned a lot last year, and I continue to learn more as the year went on. And I elevated from a operator uh, to our AEC's assistant for operations. And I guess I did a bad job because I got promoted to AEC for Gwinnett County Public Health. Um, it's been a rewarding experience. I hope you find it the same for those of you that are just joining. Now, in Gwinnett County, and I understand that uh, all counties are not alike, which is probably good and probably bad at the same time. But one of the uh, learning experiences in Gwinnett County was we had three primary hospitals to support, each in different stages of bringing up and in operation with our hospital net. The last hospital to bring up was in Duluth. And it was very interesting because they themselves were going through a complete re-engineering of their incident command system at the hospital. And so we essentially got in the ground floor of their site coming up. And in support of that, um, it was essential to let them know a few things. And this slide deck, by the way, is oriented towards allowing you, and it will be up on the Georgia Aries website, to allow you to do a similar presentation to your SERV facility to let them understand more about who we are, how they engage us. If it's a brand new facility and they're hearing about us for the first time, how do they get in touch with you? Well, the sheer fact that you're there giving a presentation, obviously, they're in touch with you, but there is an alternate way. Um, what is the emergency communications requirement that you're helping them to uh, solve? And then what are the Georgia Aries hospital team requirements that we as operators have placed upon us? Obviously, they'd like to know more about what uh, the requirements that we have to satisfy. And then going on with that, that they as an individual facility are really, really part of a bigger picture. Now the hospitals and the serve facilities know that they're in a uh, health region. In our case, in Gwinnett County, it's Region D. Uh, but they may not know how they fit in across the county when it comes to emergency communications, and they may not know how they fit in across the region and the state when it comes to emergency communications. And you're gonna help fill that picture in for them. And then, when you're at the facility, what does the facility look like? What should its capabilities be? And that's something else that they need to know, so that they know when it's necessary to sound out emergency communications, how that's going to be accomplished. And then, um, okay, well, what do we do for training? Uh, how do we staff our position? And what type of reporting that we do? And I'm very thankful because Brett has already covered a lot of these elements. So I'll just briefly uh, go into those areas. And then we've learned some key elements to be successful at doing this. And I'll just be frankly honest with you, are we completely successful in Gwinnett County? No, we're not. It's like a roller coaster. But you're gonna learn some key words, patience, perseverance, and humility. And we'll talk about that in a long time. So we all know who we are, but the people that you're talking to at the hospital may not know who you, uh, we are in the bigger sense of the word. Or, but uh, please emphasize that we are volunteers, that there is an organizational structure that we fall within. Now I recognize within your individual counties, you may not have an AEC for public health, but uh, one of the things to emphasize here though is, is that there is a leadership chain that we all report to from the county district up to the section level. And that within your county or within your district, there may be an AEC that's been appointed to focus on public health. In Gwinnett County, that's now my case. And Larry, where's my raise? I'd, I'd like to. It's a yeah. So how does the uh, hospital engage us? Well, obviously, if you're there talking with them, uh, you can provide uh, direct support in that sense. But also, if you go to the Georgia Aries website, and you look real closely in the top right-hand corner, there's a contact us uh, hotspot there. 
and you can tell them to go ahead and select that, fill in their contact information and their interests, and that will go through the leadership chain and probably over to Brett, and then Brett will contact the nearest EC or if there's a AEC for public health, we'll get in touch with that individual, whoever's appropriate for your area. Now, as far as emergency communications requirements, you all heard of the CMS requirement. How many of you are aware of the particular title of that, this section of that? Well, here it is. That's the uh, federal uh, requirement 482.15C3. And if you go down in that uh, requirement section, there's a specific line item that states federal, state, tribal, regional, and local emergency management agencies that uh, the hospital must have an alternate means of communicating to. And that is the particular line item that you provide. Also, uh, there's more detail about specifically uh, specifying amateur radio, and that is the CMS requirements. There's a state operations manual, and in the appendix, we're listed as one of those providing uh, services. At the FEMA level, um, FEMA doesn't list us as a required or uh, that emergency communications, but they do list us in their training plans that they provide to agencies and uh, we're listed in there as a specific resource. So why use amateur radio emergency services? Well, we just covered it. One is we're noted by FEMA, and CMS is helping to satisfy the emergency communications requirement. As Brett mentioned earlier, uh, we're heavily involved with the uh, GHA, and uh, they have recommended or stated us as a solution provider, and we're uh, quite well set up with the great work that Brett, Steve, and others have done to help uh, service these needs. The emergency hospital plan, uh, definitely you should have a copy of that that you have read, and it periodically gets updated. Uh, there is a second revision that was done not too long ago that you should be uh, looking at, and you should have a copy of that. But that pretty much specifies um, the, many of the elements that we have to meet uh, in providing our services. Uh, it's interesting, the last bullet up here about satellite solutions are expensive. I was wondering about that, and I was talking with uh, the emergency preparedness manager at our local health department recently, and guess what they got rid of because they were too expensive? They got rid of their satellite phone systems. I think he was saying something on the order of $17 a minute. It was a ridiculous fee. There's different plans, and th that particular one they had was $17 a minute. Tell your uh, audience at the hospital uh, many of the elements that you heard from Brett uh, you need to inform them about. Uh, for example, the background checks, credential with the Georgia State Aries. Uh, the HIPAA training is very important to them. That's a big word in their environment that you have received HIPAA training and you have biennial recurring uh, training requirements. Now the hospital may end up requiring you to take their HIPAA training so be flexible in that regards, but that is part of our overall training. We're trained in voice and digital communications, and by the way, I can't emphasize more, you need to know how to use WinLink in your sleep and blindfolded. That is the primary way of going. I see some heads nodding out there. We're registered with the Georgia 911 system and with WebEOC. Um, by the way, some hospitals have their own little section in WebEOC, so they, they're familiar with. I know at Duluth, that's the case. They use WebEOC themselves. Um, the Everbridge uh, system that we're registered with, uh, Gwinnett County, when there's an Everbridge call out, uh, I may get them through our uh, call group, uh, or I may get actually Everbridge calls from the uh, hospital themselves. So when there's an event in Gwinnett County, it seems like we must get three or four different Everbridge notifications, three or four different text messages, three or four different email messages. So it's kind of fun when an incident happens or they have a training exercise. I want to emphasize uh, what was said earlier, that when we are on site, we are underneath the hospital or the facility's instant command system. That's a very important point, that they have to know that they are in charge when we are on site. 
We're not responding or reporting to the EOC leadership, we're reporting to the hospital leadership. We're not re reporting or responding to our emergency coordinator on ARIES, we're reporting to the incident command structure. A very important point that they must know. Many of the counties have uh, MOUs assigned with the hospital. In Gwinnett County we have one, and it covers many of the same elements that were mentioned earlier by Brett. Food, the expectation that the hospital will provide food, for example, or if not, at a discounted price for their staff. The uh, MOU also talks about call-out and other aspects. The MOU calls about credentialing. And by the way, we have a challenge with credentialing right now because of the roller coaster and changing policies. So I was the one that was chuckling out here when Brett mentioned that earlier. Also, it's important to note to them that, uh, and this is a, the, one of the big values that we bring, is that we have connectivity to the EMA for the county and the state. Gwinnett County, we're quite, quite fortunate because the Gwinnett County uh, EMA has provided a fairly large radio room and they provide the equipment, maintain the PCs and the monitors, etc. It's a very nice setup. Uh, go on to mention to the hospital team that you're part of a bigger picture. Now they know about the health districts, you know about Region D. Uh, within the county, there could be other facilities that you are supporting. Make sure that they're aware that in terms of emergency communications connectivity, that you are connected with those other facilities. In Gwinnett County, we have the three hospitals, hospitals I mentioned. We have the Emergency Management Agency, what we staff if there's an incident. And we also have the Gwinnett Newton Rockdale Health Department that has a radio facility that they provide for us and that we staff. So emphasize in this case, this is an example county, that we have connectivity to those sister or peer groups across the county. And then go on to emphasize that at the regional level, we have connectivity across the regions, in particular to the RCH for our, our region, and then through the auspices of what Steve provides, we have uh, connectivity across the state when we run the hospital net across the state, but we also have, you know, back to it again, we have county, EMA, and then connectivity to GEMA in Atlanta or the alternate site. So go on to say that, well, what does a typical radio facility look like? And what could I expect to have at my facility? Now, we are fortunate there was a master craft make, crafts maker who put together some really beautiful cabinets for us on rolling wheels, pull out uh, drawers and the stuff, and it locks up for security. But basically, we go on to say that at the facility, the type of uh, setup we require requires a VHF, UHF radio, HF radio, digital communications, signal link, or you may have an alternate way if you're lucky, a Cantronics device. Um, but also that we need from the hospital, we need emergency power. You've probably heard of red plug power at the hospital. I think that's a consistent term across the various uh, hospital facilities. But you need to be on emergency power or have emergency power available should the need arise. Um, also go on to emphasize that the hospital team needs to be credentialed with their facility. Gwinnett County for the Gwinnett Health System, for example. And this provides access to the radio room. Um, in the case of uh, Gwinnett Lawrenceville, uh, employee parking, so you don't pay $3 for parking when you're, you're going on in. So staffing and training wise, uh, emphasize that our goal is to staff the facilities to provide 24-hour coverage, typically in two 12-hour shifts. Um, I heard your comment about 12 hours being a challenge for you earlier, uh, but that's you know the goal is to provide that 24-hour coverage for an extended period of time, and that uh, on a regular recurring basis we conduct uh, monthly statewide Aries hospital network drills. Steve being the NCS for those drills, and that, that we are involved with county and state ARIES uh, nets and drills. And if you're not doing, for example, taking advantage of the Sunday Georgia State uh, ARIES nets, checking into HF and doing digital work, uh, that's just another area that you might want to look at to get more experience and going on. Now, the last bullet item up here uh, include ARIES team uh, in their facility drills. 
is very, very important because one of the things you want to do is you want to develop a face-to-face -face relationship with the incident command team at your hospital. You don't want to be walking in, as mentioned earlier, for the first time in a real actual incident and getting to know these people and developing a working relationship during an actual incident is the wrong time to do that. The right time to do it is when they are performing their own drills, tabletop, etc. That way they know you, you know them, they know where the radio room is at, by the way, and you know where the incident command center for the hospital typically is at. Now, in a real incident, that location may get moved, but you have to not have an idea of where to go initially. So we conduct the monthly exercise and go on and elaborate a little bit about that with the folks. Uh, it's an opportunity to provide hands-on training for our team members. Uh, more importantly, it also helps to verify the equipment still works. You'd be surprised from month to month what breaks down at your radio station or there's been someone from maintenance come in and all of a sudden your power has gone away or something of that nature. Also emphasize that these drills follow a standard format and that we drill, drill, drill and drill. They understand that. They understand because they conduct their own drills in their hospital for various needs. Also emphasize that these drills are documented that it becomes a formal part of those station records. Now why is documentation important? And that is if there's a joint commission survey or a CMS group survey and they come in and they drill down in their survey down to emergency communications, there has to be something written that they can provide to say, yes, we have conducted drills in emergency communications, here's the dates, here's the verification log, basically. Yes, sir. You might want to explain the Joint Commission is. It might not be well understood. <laughs> I hardly understand it myself. Um, I know Larry, Brett, there we go. Yeah, the joint Commission is the, um, it's the federal facilities organization that comes in and verifies that hospitals are meeting all of their compliance issues for state and federal regulations. And it's a rigorous, uh, inspection. They are usually on site at the hospitals. They come in unannounced and they're usually there for two weeks. They usually give them one day's notice and it usually happens about once every two years. Oh yeah, they, they pretty much, it's, I mean everything from inventories to documentation to all of their records. As we all know, if it wasn't documented, it didn't happen. So keeping your logs, keeping your 309s, keeping them in a folder, in a binder at your station so that you can demonstrate that yes, we are here, we are utilizing this equipment, it verified that it works, and they have something to show. Yeah, we have auxiliary communications. Yeah. Thank you, Brett. And by the way, um, back to Everage, Everbridge and regressing for a moment, when the uh, Joint Commission came a couple of months ago to the Gwinnett Health System, we got a plethora of Everbridge notifications from the hospital saying the Joint Commission is here, the Joint Commission is doing that. Watch out, they're going down this hallway, you know, that type of thing. It was an <laughs> interesting use of Everbridge. Uh, wait a minute, this is being recorded to go up on the web. No. <laughs> uh, they may ask and want you to drill down a bit on what is the standard monthly training format. And for those of you that are currently involved with uh, hospital nets, you know that Steve sends out this really great, and Brett sends out this really great monthly statement of what it is that we're going to do, what frequencies we're going to use. Essentially, this is a synopsis of that for uh, your audience at the hospital. Uh, in terms of documentation, um, I know the Gwinnett Health System knows about ICS. They sent all their leadership off to 300 and 400 level courses. Um, they are embracing the hospital HICS form. Um, and we use the standard ICS 213, which is fine, but basically um, just make sure they're aware that we are using standard ICS forms for communications, that we maintain and log an ICS 309, uh, which you see up here. And then in terms of reporting, I gotta say thank you very much, Steve, for the great work you do when you publish the monthly reports. By the way, we're overdue for one from last, oh, Brett, okay. 
Um, but this has, been a, this has been a very valuable report because um, I showed uh, this to the Duluth Hospital team and they were listed as red for a long, long time. And then the vice president of administration for the hospital was there, a great guy, and, and, and uh, they're very supportive because we don't like red. And so we're now green, which is what this is. <laughs> but just keep in mind that uh, there are reports and documentation that occur uh, outside of your station 309, and this is very valuable. So um, some key elements says, and this has been in part learned by the School of Hard Knocks uh, for us. But uh, document you know, all radio external communications and, and external radio communications into their training plan. Um, up in Gwinnett, the health system just released a brand new emergency uh, communications plan and we're listed as a specific line item in there. They provide information how we get activated, for example. That's in their communications plan, and this is very important stuff that needs to be there. It's also a CMS requirement, which drives this, right? Um, I mentioned earlier a memorandum of understanding. That's very helpful. Uh, it sets in place a better written framework of the relationship. Remind them that we are Gwinnett Aries uh, Hospital Team volunteers, that we go through a uh, recruiting, staffing, and training process as an ongoing process that we're credentialed uh, with Georgia Aries. And as I mentioned earlier, it's very sp important that you get credentialed with the facilities. Integration into the uh, facilities uh, volunteer staff and ICS program. Uh, this is something that's uh, relatively new for in us in Gwinnett. And uh, I'm a member of the Duluth ICS team now. I report to the logistics section uh, chief and I, he knows I'm a resource and we're developing a working relationship and as an outcome of this uh, they are now incorporating us into their ongoing facility exercises so in terms of lesson learned and element of success get integrated with their ICS team build that relationship uh, radio station equipment and maintenance um, a couple of things that are important to note here in terms of uh, key elements in the hospital facility, who controls the physical plant? It's the engineering department. You need to be connected with that engineering director or his representative because guess what? You need red plug power, you need communications, you need antennas, and they typically go up on the roof. Uh, if you have a tall hospital, that's even uh, more challenging. But you need a relationship with the engineering department, right? Um, and that we provide to the plate uh, the, the operator skills, but the administration needs to support this function to assist you with whatever equipment needs to get set up and so forth. The engineering department needs to assist you. The IT department, and all these are separate entities at some hospital, uh, needs to support you in communications to your radio room. We talked earlier about um, the method of activation. Um, one thing to note is that if you are, when you are activated by the hospital, that activation from the hospital may be direct to you in Everbridge. It may be an activation that is a request to the EOC for you to go and then the EOC passes back the activation to you or through the EC for your county. However you get activated, make sure your EC knows about it. That's uh, one of the most important things here. We are a resource within the ICS team. I mentioned that earlier at Duluth. Um, I mentioned that they're incorporating the HICS form of structure. And in the HICS, the Hospital Institute Command Structure, there's a website, hicscenter.org. There's actually a template there for what an emergency operator should be doing. And in fact, at our hospital, they're, they're doing that. Um, essential information enabling message flow. Uh, so one of the things that I learned during the SCT, and that was a challenging exercise, um, what was the station call sign for the other hospital, for example, or whatever? And uh, I didn't have it there in the binder. So now, pasted to our operating station is a list of call signs for our other hospital partners, our state and our county, EMA, and so now it's right there in front of us. 
Yeah, thank you, Charlie. You just raised up one I brought with me. Um, last mile communications. How many, this is a good one, how many of you have gone to the monthly drills, you've had a very successful drill communicating with our team, either regional and, and at the state level, but you never, never, ever talk to the ICS team. You don't even know how to get a message. If Steve was to send me a message that says this is uh, being passed through from the state, GEMA uh, needs to be delivered to the ICS commander for your hospital, how would you get that to them? That's a very good question. So you need to know about last mile communications. How do I connect and communicate with the hospital incident command system? How do they communicate to me? So avoid being in this little isolated radio room, talking back and forth with EMA, GEMA, and the other hospitals, uh, and that's all you do. Also integrate with the hospital ICS team. Solve that last mile communications issue. I can't emphasize that one uh, any higher. Because if you're not talking with the incident command system, you, if you do not have a method that is uh, uh, easy to use and jointly understood with the ICS team, then you're not solving your role as an emergency communicator for that hospital. That makes sense? Uh, lastly, I'd like to close with, with these, th these three points, and that is, uh, I have learned over the last year, you have to have a lot of patience with the CERV facility. The hospital's role in life is what? Saving lives and making money. Yeah, saving lives and, and unfortunately, making money is the other part, right? Yeah, and, and, and you know, we could be on the opposite end of the stick. We actually might be demanding some money at times, right, to support the role that the, we've been asked to do. But anyway, um, the hospitals literally don't operate at internet time. It is taking months, in some cases, for us to get some action items uh, done with the hospital that we do. So what do you do? Well, you apply perseverance, you set a long-term goal, you set some shorter-term objectives, and you work towards those long-term goals being patient in doing that, and being per perseverant in keeping it up. Now, one of the questions that pops up is, well, how do we afford you? Well, you're giving your own volunteer time, that's coming free, but it does require radio equipment, it does require coax runs, it does require antennas, uh, and it does require, uh, in some cases, uh, red plug power routed to wherever your radio room is, that costs money, it requires dollars for IT function. Well, be creative. Uh, it was mentioned earlier, grants, right? And grants, in the case of uh, Gwinnett, Newton, Rockdale uh, Health uh, District, the county, counties are combined under one uh, health department. We were able to obtain some funds some years back that purchased HF radios, antennas, VHF, UHF equipment. And so these hospitals got the basic equipment through federal dollars free to them. Uh, but, and those grant monies are still there. You have to be creative, you have to go out and find them, but talking with Brett just before this session, uh, there is money there, there is money there. So be, uh, say, creative in, in, in helping to uh, solve the uh, question of equipment for your state. Uh, don't be afraid to, sorry? Um, don't be afraid to talk to the engineering department, the hospital team. Um, they have surplus PCs, surplus monitors. They're, they're refreshing that stuff periodically. At uh, Duluth Hospital, they just uh, allocated to us a laptop and a nice, good, wide monitor that is now part of our radio station equipment. So that's just being creative. Just ask, see if you can get stuff repurposed. Um, humility is the one I want to close on lastly. Um, remember, you're a volunteer, you're there, you're not dictating to them how they're going to do their business. You're taking guidance and direction from them, and then you may provide suggestions, but do it in a positive, constructive manner. Don't get upset, stay focused on the mission. The mission that is what? Is to provide emergency, an alternative emergency communications path. So with that, and I see a couple hands coming up, uh, questions concerning my presentation? <laughs>